<clears throat> Welcome everybody. Welcome to Classic Cast number 22. I'm here with Stay Safe TV. I'm here with Tips Out Baby. Up. And uh, we're here joined by our guests, Asmongold and Nixium. They've been on before, and uh, this is actually our, our one year, a little bit over, a little bit over one year anniversary episode. And uh, we wanted to bring on two of our friends, two guys who've, who've come on as guests for us early on. Nixium, uh, I believe, was our, our very first guest that, we, that we've had on. And uh, Asmongold, of course, has been... Uh, incredibly supportive actually our guest for our first live episode asmongold was um so those of you guys uh a lot of you guys probably already know asmongold in case you don't know asmongold hi uh, yeah he's, he's a big wow streamer he does that he's also a former dark soul streamer uh and future bloodborne streamer mm. and current apex streamer yeah so really just kind of trying to do all kinds of stuff uh nixium is also a former wow guy uh, <laughs> now he's a now he's an ESO streamer. Now he's an ESO oh, streamer, I, I, and then he's going back second. to classic. Yeah, I'm going back to classic. Okay, <laughs> it's kind of right. it's kind of the situation we're all in right now. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of the situation we're all in right now. We're all kind of dipping our toes and in, into everything, okay. uh, but we're all classic guys. Yeah, we're all classic guys, and I That's don't know. Right. Nixie might have us on the on the ESO boat here pretty soon. Uh, so of course, uh, again, we're here with Stay Safe and Tips Out as well. Uh, and we have a lot to talk about today. Uh, first off, let's just kind of talk about everything that's happened in the last year. I mean, because uh, kind of how we started Classic Cast and how everything really with Classic News has kind of gone. Um, I know for one, like Classic Cast initially, whenever it started, uh, and, and Stay Safe remembers this. Stay Safe and I were talking on on Discord one night, like randomly, and we're like, dude, like we should start a podcast. And uh, it was just us two. At and this the time. was this was months before Classic Wow was announced, by the way. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We should start a podcast, and then it was just kind of yeah. like, yeah, but like you know, th like who who are we gonna have as our third? And kind of like there was like stuff going on. We we're like, okay, yeah, whatever. We just kind of like tab tabled the idea for a while, and um, eventually Classic was announced, and I got banned. <laughs> so it, everything was kind of in limbo, like kind of trying to figure out what all we were gonna do, and uh, that's whenever. I think I posted a video on the Classic Wow subreddit, and then uh, Tips reached out to me. He's like, hey, like, would you want to do a podcast? And I was like, well, it's funny that you say that, because Stacey and I had kind of been kicking this idea around for a couple months now. And uh, that was really kind of the beginnings of Classic Cast. And, and we started out, we did them on my YouTube channel. We didn't do them live at first, uh, but now here we are. And uh, we've had a lot of support from a lot of people, you know, whether it's Nixium or Asmin or uh, so many of the other guests that have come on. And uh, it's been a really, really good time. It's crazy to see how far the show's come, too, because you look at the first episode and it was, you know, just like three guys doing whatever. And now it's like a live show on Twitch. I think it's made a lot of progress, especially for something about classic. Wow. I mean, mm -hmm. at the beginning, obviously, there was a ton of like, you know, new things happening with the game. But right now, people are all just sitting around and waiting for the alpha to come out. I think at least that's where I'm at. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like I remember when we first started it out, like in our first meetings, Remember as fans, stay safe, like yeah. we'll be talking about like content planning and how are we going to schedule this out? And, you know, how many episodes can we do? How frequently should we do it? Yeah. And I remember I remember there's this one distinct meeting where we were like, you know, yeah, we'll do like one episode like, you know, every other week or every three weeks or something like that. Yeah. And we had like like 10 or 12 video ideas. And I remember one of you guys said like, OK, this is enough. You know, this should be enough to get us to classic. And now it's like, <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> it's like, yeah, dude, I don't, we're going to need a little more than that. But yeah, uh, yeah. yeah but it's, like, it's just like, yeah, it's been fun. Yeah. I also remember early on, you know, like this is before we even did the first one. We were debating whether or not to stream them or just do them on YouTube videos and upload them to YouTube. And uh, this this was something stupid. Like Tips and Esfon were both like, yeah, we should stream them. And I was like, I don't think it's a good idea. I think we have more control over it. If we can, like, we can edit it, we can redo it, we can re-record it if we need to for YouTube. But right. man, like, streaming them was definitely the way to go. Yeah, I, I think it's a lot more fun that way. I, yeah. I think it's a lot more fun. It's just more hype. And uh, I, I, I think that uh, I, I think that it gets a, a different audience of people involved that don't just watch on YouTube. I mean, there's people who watch on YouTube that don't watch our Twitch content and vice versa. So <clears throat> I think that's something that's... Uh, that's definitely uh, been good for for everything, especially like involving like the classic community and whatnot, and the amount of support that we've gotten from from so many guys. Um, mm -hmm. Let's recap a little bit, right? Let's recap a little bit and and talk about everything that's happened in this year, 
or so. I'll say a year and then some, right? Because I, I guess the classic announcement was back in, in November of 2017. What year is it now? 20, yep. 2019 yeah. now, right? So, yeah, 2017. It's so, year. yeah, it's current year. So, um, we had that kind of out of the blue. Nobody really expected it to come. And uh, I know for me personally, I didn't even, I wasn't following BlizzCon. I was sitting in my living room playing Madden with my phone and in, in my, uh, actually plugged into my computer. And I come back like an hour after the announcement. And my phone is just Discord, just everything is just going off. Like I, yeah. it was, it was absolutely insane. Uh, there was no way in a million years that I thought they were actually going to come out with classic servers. And uh, yeah, yeah, I felt, I felt the same way. Like I was totally checked out. I wasn't even watching that BlizzCon or following <laughs> it. I was asleep, and so I, I remember waking up to tons of phone vibrations and uh, mm -hmm. people were like oh my god class got announced. And I said no, you're not. Like or no, it didn't. Like this is just a prank. I went back to bed. I woke up, and then I saw it was real. <laughs> But yeah. like, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you guys remember the wall of no copy pasta that any any time classic WoW or legacy servers or vanilla WoW was mentioned on the on the Battle.net forums or an MMO champion or anywhere, people would paste this super long copy pasta called the wall of no. And it was like, like, I don't know, like 15 paragraphs of people ex explaining why Blizzard was never going to do it, why it was cost ineffective, why it's a dumb idea. You know, it listed off all the features that the stupid vanilla players like w had taken for granted. And they like, if, if you're going to play Classic WoW, um, you might be forgetting that Classic WoW doesn't have transmog. Like, are you sure you can live without transmog? It's not going to have <laughs> flying mounts. Are you sure you really don't want <sighs> flying mounts? Like, so yes. yeah, it was this whole thing. Yeah, yes, we are sure. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we've we've been doing it. Dude, like, dude it's all just rose tinted <laughs> goggles. Like Oh yeah, of course, on, yeah. <laughs> it's all just rose tinted <laughs> goggles, boys. Yeah, Go no, on. it's 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 so it's just so funny like how how much all that has changed and um, like to, to stay safe, to how worried people were about like, are, are they going to like go and mess with everything? And sure, like there's still some things that are on the table. And, and I think we've done a really good job so far, like talking about our concerns, right? Talking about how um, whether it's the, the, the four stages of content release or uh, whether it's loot trading or sharding or, you know, wh whatever it is, a lot of people have voiced their concerns. And I, I think that's gone a long way. I know on this show, like we we definitely haven't held back any any criticism right of, of anything that we've heard since the since the demo or anything like that i think we've been pretty open and, and upfront about like what we what we don't like uh whether wait we... i have a question okay i before you get into like all your malarkey there is something okay. i would like to know from the classy cast team all right uh -huh. and i want to i want to hear from asmund gold first because he's a fellow guest all right here's the mm -hmm. thing like we love classic wow and, you know, a lot of people in the chat like Classic WoW, all right? We're big fans. But the question is, like, at what point in, like, WoW's history did you look back and say, damn, I want to play that again and not, like, what I'm playing right now? Like, what expansion mm. was it? What time? Because I don't think we've the ever talked about that. first time that I thought that? Yeah. Cataclysm. I mean, like, yeah, Cata was the main yeah. point, I think, for everybody mm. because you it's like in wrath it was like man i wish i could go back you can you just go reroll a character in mm -hmm. burning crusade it was the same thing but in cataclysm nope you can't go back and do that south shore quest where you have to collect 10 murloc <laughs> heads and it takes two hours because apparently murlocs don't have heads even though you've been killing them for two hours you know <laughs> you can't do that you've got to go do this new you know super streamlined quest line and you don't have a quest that takes you from booty bay to uh i don't know like what what is the area in the top of calendar how did i forget this the place uh, winter spring yeah it's oh. winter spring like, oh, oh yeah it, it's like those are the <laughs> yeah. things that make the game special and so yeah, yeah it, it's cataclysm for me a hundred percent yeah yeah for me, it was uh, definitely, uh, I don't know if you guys remember, so ICC and Arena Season 8 lasted like a crazy long amount of time and people yeah. got really bored like halfway through that like final patch of Wrath. And, mm -hmm. uh, or I guess there was, okay, yeah, there was the like the Dragonshire. But anyway, um, on my server, there were actually level 60 twink guilds forming because people were mm -hmm. so bored with Wrath at the end. And so I joined, I, I made a twink in, at the end of Wrath and I was like, holy crap, like I forgot that like these dungeons are cool. Like these raids are cool. Like, wow. So that was the first time that like vanilla like re-entered my brain, I guess. That's so funny you say that, <laughs> stay safe. That's like, that's so similar to like what happened with me. So like End of Wrath was the first time I quit the game on my own accord. Meaning that like I didn't have to quit it because of like school or anything like that. 
like when I just I was bored of it. And mm. uh, right before that, there was also a Twink guild on on a different server that I actually realm transferred to just to play with them. And it mm. was really, really fun. And I leveled the priest and all that stuff. And it was great. But uh, that's what like kind of catalyzed my curiosity about like private servers and stuff like that, because in that guild, people were talking about, oh, this isn't the real thing. You know, if you want the real thing, you got to try this private server and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's what kind of kicked it off. And, and I started exploring a little bit and, and tried it for mm -hmm. the first time, but uh, or like the first time since it was it was around, I guess. But, uh, mm. but yeah, it was the end of Wrath period, man. Like you couldn't put your finger on what was wrong. But by the end of Wrath, you could sort of feel something was wrong. And mm. yeah, that, that was it for me. I think with the end of Wrath, like you had Dungeon Finder and Pug culture got so out of control. People were pugging ICC and you had Dungeon Finder at this point. Like the community is like, that's the point where the community really started to crumble in my mind. What about you, s -Fand? Yeah, I was going to say for me, I actually, uh, so I quit. Uh, I've said this quite a few times before, but I quit WoW for the first time, like, uh, the first time that I quit for a significant period of time, there's times where I missed a month or something like that, you know, just because you're, you're kids, right? And it's like, oh, I forgot to pay or I didn't get a game card or mom gives me allowance and then I save it up and then I go buy a 60 day game card at Best Buy, like, you know, stuff like that. Yep. So uh, the first time I like quit was in Wrath. I was like, you know what? A lot of my friends had quit. Uh, my class has changed a lot. It's funny because Paladins were really strong in Wrath, but I was just like, man, I was so hyped for Wrath. So hyped for Wrath, but a few things really like kind of punched me in the gut was uh, finding out the Ashbringer was like going to be unattainable was actually a big deal to me, uh, which is funny because now I, I thought it was uh, totally absurd in Legion how everybody had the Ashbringer, right? It, it was always one of, one of two extremes. extremes. Um, so that was a big punch to the gut. Another one, and this is really the most important thing, was more than my class, uh, not, not even feeling like my class played the way that I wanted it to, was so many of the people that I knew and this community that had uh, been built around me in Burning Crusade and Classic, and mostly in Burning Crusade, that's kind of whenever I peaked, a lot of people had quit or were taking breaks from the game, and it was my senior year of high school. So uh, I was just like, man, I've got football, I've got this, i got a lot of stuff going on, you know what, I'm just going to chill on WoW and... and I don't know, I might kick it around later. And then I came back, and whenever I came back, I think at this point they had introduced, like, the Dungeon Finder, and they had introduced, like, achievements. And Well, achievements were introduced in Wrath, but uh, they were kind of ingrained in the community that, like, oh, mm. you, you know, link your achievement if you want to come. And I'm like, I haven't done the thing. How am I supposed to come yeah. to a raid or a dungeon if I don't, like, how am I supposed to get the achievement if nobody invites me? There was that. There was item level being, uh, or not item level, but gear score at the time being a staple of... Uh, essentially how good of a player is, which is totally absurd, how, how good of somebody's character is. Uh, now, with that being said, the the way gear had become optimized over time kind of led to gear score actually being a fairly good like metric of seeing how well-geared somebody was, as opposed to in vanilla and, and uh, to a less extent in Burning Crusade. But mm. gear score was a thing. Uh, but really, whenever I was like, I hard quit the game, and I'm like, dude, I'm done. F this game was cataclysm i i i felt like the game was completely different at this point i logged out i canceled my account i took a screenshot and the screenshot is still sitting in my photo bucket account because i i post i think i posted on the forums i used to post on the forums like all the time early on and it's funny i can't find like any of my old posts but i know i used to post on the forums all the time but i, I guess there's like no record of it uh like before I, I like 2007 old ones. man you if you're anything like me Thank God. <laughs> like, I, the, I would just say the dumbest stuff. Like, and it wasn't yeah. even anything like bad. It was just stupid. Like, yo, yeah. come do this raid and get it on like Donkey Kong. And it's like, right, right. it's from Asmodee 2011. That's what my Facebook is like. Account. It's out yeah. there. Yeah. My Facebook yeah. is just like that. Like, you know how Facebook, uh, if you guys have even logged into Facebook recently, it says like, oh, this happened eight years ago. And I would say something stupid, like, just like, I, I don't know, like something just yeah. like really emo or like, it's like, it's like, man, like, wish I had people to hang out with right now. Like, just like, stuff yeah. like, that. I'm, like super cringe. <laughs> so, like, no, just stuff Amazing. like that, you know? You see, for me, like when I like started to become a big classic fan, it was, it was in Wrath of the Lich King. Because halfway through Wrath, a lot of my real life friends that I played WoW with, they all quit. 
they left because they hated Wrath of the Lich King. Mm -hmm. uh, my my friend Ben, he hated Wrath for selfish reasons because he was it was a warlock in BC, and warlocks were uh, a little strong in Burning Crusade, just a little bit. Yeah, a little, a little and, bit, a little bit. And in Wrath, uh, they kind of got nerfed a bit, and so he didn't <laughs> like that. He didn't think the game was fun anymore. But there was one. a lot of things that we talked about back in Wrath, and a lot of the things that I quote from those conversations. Because I remember when they added achievements to the game. I remember mm. sitting down with my friends. It was me. It was Aaron, Chad, Ben, everybody. They're sitting down. And one of us said, what the fuck is this? Achievements and WoW? Is this Xbox Live? My character is my achievement. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. need some book, like, keeping tabs. And it was because of what, you know, S-Fan was just talking about. People were saying, like, oh, link achievement if you want to, like, do this run. Link the achievement. And, mm -hmm. uh, and we hated it. I hated it. And uh, they all quit, but I stuck around because I didn't have a life. And um, I, I've, I've never quit WoW until, well, BFA. Uh, wow. you know, I'm on subbed right now. So it's hmm. the first time in my entire life I've quit WoW. I guess my Man. thing with achievements, like whenever they first came out, I was like, yeah, this is for people that can't actually do raids. You know, and hmm. so they're going to go and kill like Hogger or something and get a... 10 points into an imaginary score that yeah. doesn't make them do more damage and i always thought they were like really stupid i think i remember feeling the exact same way that you did nixiem about it being you know like what is this xbox live i, yeah, I do dude. agree also like like middle of wrath is like whenever things change trial yeah. of the crusader like that was it i thought because i've thought about this a lot right trial of the crusader was the point where things took a turn for the worst absolutely mm -hmm. like if you even like remember something as shallow as like the armor sets like mm -hmm. the armor sets of toc are so disgustingly bad well, to the funny, okay so before. all right all right here's the it was so all right it's terrible think about this system okay you've only got four real sets of gear you've got the plate version the uh male version the leather version and the cloth version but the mm -hmm. thing is that there's a horde and alliance version of each one. Mm. What a terrible system. Mm -hmm. And mm. they did that in TOC. It's funny how you see like uh you see things oh, that oh, the the joke was that they did it again in BFA. Yeah, uh, well, nobody's I, laughing. I, I just want to make sure well, that the, the the correlation was made there. Yeah. Well, and that's that's yeah. exactly what I was gonna say. It's funny how you can <laughs> see like you can start to see things that ended up being like really bad later on. You can start to see them like sprinkled in yeah. early in. Yeah, um, I, I remember. It, I remember when TOC came out. I had this thought like, is this an experiment to see how lazy they can be and still have players accept the raid? Because it was reused boss models. You know, there were two like zones. There was the above ground zone and the bottom ground zone. Um, like the above area was used for a dungeon, like you said, with the armor sets. I feel like it was an experiment to see like how little work they could do in making a raid and making the, the gear to go along with it and still have players be cool with it. And I felt mm -hmm. like a lot of people weren't happy with it when it came out. And the ironic well, part, the ironic part out of all of it is that it didn't need to come out when it came out. Ulduar was still fresh. It was like four and a half months old. And they just threw this garbage out there that was, again, completely reused from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. The armor sets looked worse than quest gear. And I was like, mm -hmm. why, why, you know, like why? And I think the, the explanation was they needed something to tie in to like the invasion of ICC. They needed some kind of like lore based raid to kind of tie into it. But uh, I, I, think I just, that, well, yeah. It wasn't I think only that, they also like changed yeah. how dungeons work as well because they nerfed dungeons into the ground. I mean, you didn't even like need to do anything like crowd control anymore. That was and I the same at the beginning of Wrath, dude. I mean, like yeah. that, that ended, I feel like so many people overplay how hard dungeons were. I remember playing my prop paladin and burning crusade. Whenever I had full tier four gear, I could go in there and basically tank all of shattered halls at the same time. I remember fate tanking it as an arms warrior on heroic shattered halls. Whenever I had my, my vengeful gear. Heroics mm -hmm. were never really that hard unless you were doing them before you had cares and gear. I, I, yeah. I think that the worst thing about like what Tip said is totally true. And it, it basically set the stage for the problem that I think the game has now, right? And it's that it invalidated Old War. It, it was so bad that actually people might not remember this, but Valnir used to be 239 item level. Blizzard had to increase it up to four, sorry, 245 which was TOC level because so few people were using it and it just completely invalidated a legendary. It's like such a big mistake.
And mm -hmm. that was the point where Olduwar was completely irrelevant for year, minus Valinir and like one other thing. It was, I think that was the worst part about it, is that it removed that content effectively from the game. And it made Olduwar uh, hard mode progression pointless and it also made it a lot easier because you would just go to this other raid and get better gear for you to go back and do these other bosses that were harder or you know maybe equivalent difficulty that dropped worse gear it was like just a really weird system mm. so yeah i mean i i think that was the worst part about it for me personally i think that's like the same mm -hmm. issue like wow has now right we just like played patch but that that's that's my opinion mm. Right. Yeah. yeah. A systemic, a lot of systemic yeah. problems, a lot of systemic problems that we're experiencing in the game today, their roots yeah. and their seeds were planted in Wrath for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it's an unpopular opinion, but I didn't like Wrath. Like, yeah. I, I didn't. I, I'm I with it was, you, dude. I Which was like was beginning of the end to me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, like, I mean, I, I enjoyed it, like, but I didn't, I don't praise it as like the gold standard of WoW, like some people do. So I, like, I, I like to BC. Let me ask you this. Let's say, you know, six and a half or seven years from now, uh, they're going to launch Classic Wrath of Lich King. Would you guys want to play that? After having played Classic hell Vanilla yeah. and Classic TPC. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, I'd dude, love to. I, dude, like, I'll yeah. play anything over BFA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I, I think for me, like, um, Wrath, like I, I saw Wrath big time as like the beginning of the end. And we, we kind of talked about this when we had Preach on too, um, where, you know, adding in a lot of these systems that ended up like snowballing essentially into into what we have now with bfa uh but i, I really think the burning crusade was to, to me you had classic which if you talk about the whole game from start to finish uh classic was probably a little bit better but if you want to go and just look at the end game content i think burning crusade did the end game content uh better overall than uh mm -hmm than, than so. classic did just kind of refined everything you had arenas you had uh 25 man content as opposed to 40 man content so that way like you didn't feel like you were first off it was easier to build a raid with 25 man in in terms of uh the amount of people that you needed there was 10 man content that was put into the game there was well i guess that was technically in the game already with like ubrs and whatnot but um my point being is that they they just essentially refined what classic was in the end game mm. uh even though it kind of took away a little bit from the early parts of the game yeah i remember in tbc you mentioned 10 man content like this is the first time you started to see 10 man guilds like we're a yeah. raiding guild but we're only a 10 man guild so they would do kara and they would do za mm -hmm. and uh, you know like if you mastered za you could do the hard mode stuff with like trying to do it like bear runs and stuff you, i remember like on my server i was on a bad server there were so many 10 man guilds they never even did 25 man stuff yeah. I yeah. was in the 10 man guild. It was awful. That was, that was the kind of guild I ran. I actually ran a 10 man yeah. guild early early Burning Crusade and then uh and then we eventually merged with another guild to do a 25 man guild whenever uh uh they tr man, what was the other guild? There was another guild and then uh there was another guild that transferred onto our server Combo Breaker which I cons I consider Combo Breaker to be my Burning Crusade guild uh cuz I was in there for the majority of the time, but we merged with another guild and then went into Combo Breaker and uh which I actually helped come up with a name, by the way. So uh, mm -hmm. I, I did like that name. Uh, but yeah, cool. so we, we, we did. But okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> we plugs. No, but I, but I, yeah, we, we did that, and that was a lot of fun. But most of my memories are, are, are from that area of time, is doing that 25 man content. And I didn't, I didn't raid super hardcore through all the Burning Crusade because I, uh, I kind of backed out at one point and just focused on. Uh, just focused on arenas like really in season three i just did arenas in the season four i was just kind of like kind of screwing around a little bit but yeah i, I think i uh in my opinion i i really like burning crusade i thought burning crusade was great i agree with you entirely i think uh, this is kind of like a weird opinion i've always thought that 40 man raids were just like cooler i i wish they would go back to 40 man raids honestly and 25 is okay and i don't really like 20 but I remember having, I was in like this 10 man guild that was so shitty that we spent a year clearing cares in. And we never really got beyond that. And I had a conversation with some kid in my computer class and he was talking about how his guild was doing Illidan or something like that. And like this conversation made me have like a midlife crisis. And that night I went home and I made a plan like in my head. It's like, how am I going to leave this guild and get into a good guild? And by the end of Burning Crusade, I had cleared half of Stunwell and I'd killed Illidan Stormrage. So it worked. 
and it's actually really funny to see like oh yeah dude the way that like people were able to like set goals in the game back then i feel like really sh goes to show like how much the game would inspire people to play and uh you know want to get oh, yeah. better and i think that's something that was really special about burning crusade and also vanilla wow as fun I, I actually agree with you i've thought about it a lot and i would say in terms of like the entire world like i really like vanilla right and how much of like an impact things that mm -hmm. were outside of level 60 played but for end game burning crusade i would say probably was a superior experience yeah right mm -hmm definitely like the, the dream right the dream would be like a game with like vanilla's leveling and, and just base yeah. content tbc mm -hmm. attunements and raids but uh, but i do agree with the um the 40 man raid thing asman like i i've always liked the idea of raiding being more of like a celebration of, of all of your like previous feats in the game in the sense mm -hmm. that like you know you, you go out there you endure the grueling leveling you endure you know the attunements you endure the, the pre-raid biz process and then raiding is, you know, it's still a challenge to, in some degree, but it's more like you're with like these 40 other people that that did the, that had to deal with that same crap that you had to deal with. And you're kind of going out there and, and getting the loot and stuff like that. Like, I don't think raids need to necessarily be ultra challenging and tuned to like, like smaller group sizes for more difficulty. So long as you can preserve the difficulty in getting into raids, I don't think raids need to be like, oop like ultra uber challenging or anything like that i think making the difficulty mm -hmm. of raids being getting into them at the beginning made them a more rewarding experience because now whenever you do raids it's like synchronized swimming everybody has to go left everybody has to right. go right people all have to do these things and i would say one of the big reasons and this is something i i i really feel is that the big reason why a lot of players left at the beginning of cataclysm is that there was such a massive difficulty increase between ICC and like Blackwing Descent and Throne of mm -hmm. the Four Winds in terms of coordination and everything. Think about Marogar. Stack underneath them and AOE them down, then spread out and then do it again. Like it's so easy. Uh, and a lot of the bosses in ICC were the exact same way. It's not just like because he was the first boss. And you look at all these people that probably weren't very good players, but they were still able to get good gear and overcome challenges and i think that the fact that the raids now are so difficult forces blizzard into trying to make like all of these easy modes of the raid and it's ended up making raiding unfulfilling at all right and uh it, it's really disappointing to see that happen i and it's it's very hard to have like a conversation about difficulty in video games and like say that things should be easier because you have all these people that you know say oh no it's too easy now just so they can right. feel like they're good at the game but the truth is like i don't mean for me like i can handle the raids sure it's not a big deal but i've played the game for 10 years and i know everything about it for an average player or maybe a new player it's completely overwhelming and i think that the raids should go back to the difficulty that we had back in maybe wrath of the lich king or uh you know a few raids in cataclysm well, I actually talked about this on, about, nah, I talked about this on stream yesterday too. Um, I, I think one of the big things with classic is, uh, and we have talked about this in general, but um, it's a lot more casual friendly than people give it credit for, and it's because yes. like sure, like things are maybe a little bit. Uh, Things are a little bit harder. I would say I would say that in mythic rating and stuff right now, I think the game is much more mechanically difficult in retail WoW. Uh, the difficulty in classic WoW is more based around like knowledge, preparation, mm -hmm. coordination, uh, more more of that aspect of the game. It's it's more uh, it's more community centric. Uh, not not to say that you know you still have to work with your guild obviously if you're mythic rating, but it's a lot more like hey you need to do this the right oh. way mechanically as opposed to like oh knowing what to do when. Um, the the big thing for me is like whenever you have things that are more difficult on the bottom end, such as like leveling and you're putting in talent points and you're getting rewards for this while leveling up, you get this series of small wins. You're constantly feeling rewarded. Uh, yeah, that's a lot better than whenever you go to retail wow where the bottom end of the game is you level super fast lfr is a joke uh you don't really feel like you're doing anything other than wasting time like to me leveling in retail wow feels like it almost i don't get anything out of it i don't feel rewarded i don't feel like i'm getting any stronger it's cosmetic it's very the, cosmetic exactly the biggest problem with modern day wow is you can turn off your goddamn chat window 
<clears throat> and you can play it as a single player game and you can go from level one to max level and kill the current boss without saying one word to a well, single well, person. Here's something that's yeah. even worse than that. Is What's that you worse can than that? do that and you say, okay, now I want more. And yeah. Vanilla yeah. WoW had a difficulty curve. It progressively mm. got more right. difficult as you continued playing the game. And yeah. players, whenever they got to level 60, had a set of goals because they had 60 levels to make that set of goals. Now mm -hmm. you have somebody that gets put on a character that they don't fully understand because it starts at level 110. They randomly face roll their way up to 120. They queue for LFR. They kill the last boss in the game and they say, mm -hmm. okay, now I want more. They try to join a normal mode group. They have the item level for it, so they get invited and they get immediately kicked out because the games took no time at all teaching them how to play or giving them the tools to have other people teach them how to play along the way. Well, yeah, absolutely. That's I mean, what it. what does it say about your game's leveling experience if you can literally buy your way past it? Like, you're right, it teaches you It teaches you nothing. In Vanilla WoW, like, I feel like the leveling experience was very, very formative. It taught you a lot of skills that you're going to use late game. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like the leveling in Retail WoW is just very, very ineffective. Well, the uh, thing is, with, with an MMO, I mean, an MMORPG is supposed to be a massively multiplayer online role-playing game. So, like, mm -hmm. the community building aspect and the community should always be the heart of the MMO. Because at the end of the day, you're going to kill that boss. You're going to get that profession to max level. You're going to, like, do that raid. You're going to do whatever the hell it is you want to do. So what's going to keep you playing the game for, like, 10-plus years or five friend. years or even, like, a couple of months? It's the people that you play it with. And if yeah. you create a platform where people can't talk to each other, when people mm -hmm. aren't making friends, where people don't need to make friends to overcome challenges, it shouldn't be a surprise when your game starts dying because I think of it. That, I think that whenever you said need, I agree with you. I think mm -hmm. that you should, in order to overcome the biggest challenges in the game, in order mm -hmm. to beat the hardest bosses in the game on any mode, I think mm -hmm. you yeah. should have to make friends and you should have to interact with people. And what's well, so right. weird about this, and, and we should actually talk about the uh, the right click report thing soon too, because this like ties right into it with classic WoW, is the the, the problem is that I look at somebody like my mom, and right. my mom plays WoW. She's played WoW for twelve years, just like I have, and she did more raiding, she had more friends, and she enjoyed the game more, and she played it more back in vanilla WoW and Burning Crusade, because that she was not put on rails and told go from step one two three and four and she was put in a fantasy world environment and she was allowed to form her own destiny do her own things and work at them at her own pace she did professions she made gold she made so much gold that she helped me pay for my epic flying mount okay <laughs> yeah like, that is meaningful i remember that that's the so nurturing very nurturing ago. mother <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And yeah. she helped my friend pay for his too. She helped Zach pay for his epic flying mount for his there birthday. There you go, dude. And mm -hmm. like that was something that she could do and she could achieve on her own. And that was more meaningful to her than randomly opening up a box and getting a Titan Forge because it's something that she earned and she owned. Like she right. got that herself. And right. I, I, as soon as Blizzard realizes how important that is, the game mm -hmm. will turn around 180 degrees. But the problem mm -hmm. that I'm seeing is that I don't think they see what what we're seeing. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, uh, sorry, next you can go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, like, you know, to go off that point, to go off what we were talking about before, I just feel that a classic WoW for me and like even into BC, uh, Blizzard with their gameplay in WoW back then handled it so perfectly. Like mm -hmm. you could go to the Agaman Mills family crypts. And you could, you could probably do it by yourself if you had some health potions and some really sticky glue. Shout out to really sticky glue. Saved my ass a lot back in the day. Anyway, but I mean, you could probably do it. But let me tell you, if you don't, if you are not out leveled for that fucking crypt, if you do not like, if you don't have the health potions, if you don't have everything you need, you're going to die. You're going right. to die. And you're going to do that death run from Brill all the way to the Agaman Mills family crypt. And, I and I've told this story a million times. I will never forget when I got to that godforsaken crypt. And I died three times and did that long death run. And I sat there and I said, how am I supposed to do this on my own? And it's like a light bulb clicked in my head. And it was like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm not. 
And it was like, okay, well, I could, like, go and, like, keep leveling and do other quests and all that mumbo-jumbo and come back. But I don't want to do that. I want to do this quest right now. Devlin Agamand is down there, and I want to beat him. Right. I want to beat Devlin. <laughs> and so what I did is I did a call out on general chat, and I said, is anybody doing this quest? And Pyro Mike, even after all these years, Pyro Mike whispered me and said, what's up, Zick Nior? I'll help you kill <laughs> Devlin Agamand, that asshole. And we grouped up two mages and we kicked his ass. And I got there that go, green dude. ass staff and I was like, dude, Devlin Agamand can suck it, man. Look at this green staff. My first green on my mage. And I was so proud. There and that's go, how dude. they did it back in the day. And me and Pyro Mike, dude, we were friends all the way up to like freaking raiding and wrath of the Lich King. And that's when he left the game. Really? I love that guy. Yeah. I, I, it's, dude, I, that that's actually sick, friend. dude. That's yeah. awesome. That my, that's that actually so cool. Friend. Yeah. And yeah. so, dude, like, dude, that, I, that crypt, man. Like, for those of you in the chat, and I know you're watching, you never done the Agaman Mills family crypt in Tears Fall Glades in Classic. Oh, you just wait. You, you're going to have a great time. You're gonna have a great time, unless you're a hunter. Then it's gonna be easy. But the point my, is, you're gonna have a great time. My first but. character was a was an undead, so I remember it. I remember it quite oh, yeah. well. I yeah. so here here's something that I, I'm really curious about, and I've thought about this a lot with Classic mm -hmm. WoW, is that one thing that really made MMO special is the novelty of being able to interact and talk to people online, and that was so mm -hmm. new and so special back in Burning Crusade. And, you know, like all the way up until I'd say Cataclysm or maybe Wrath of the Lich King. And then it became commonplace with things like Facebook and everything and things being more integrated. Do you feel like that's something that we won't really be able to recapture with Classic WoW? Because it's something that people are just now used to. I mean, I remember back in Halo 2 lobbies, I would sit there and this was in 2004 before I started playing WoW. And I would just sit there and talk to some other random kid that's like, you know, 15 or 14, just like me. And we'd talk about how we didn't like to do homework and, you know, what we did. <laughs> nah. and how cool we were and how dumb the people that were grade below us were. And mm -hmm. do you feel like that's something that we'll be able to recapture with Classic WoW? Or is that, to a degree, gone with the times? I think... Well, um... I mean, you got personally, that. as somebody that, that, like, writes a lot of Classic WoW guides and stuff like that... Um, I think personally, a lot of the information about vanilla, like the accurate information, is still really not out there. There's going to be a lot of things that are out there. A lot of people will play classic with some kind of quest helper add-on and stuff like that. You know, those old experiences of, of having to read your quest text to know where everything is and stuff along those lines. A lot of that, unfortunately, is not going to come back. But the authenticity, the feeling of being this adventure in this large world... I can guarantee you that'll come back because mm. for people that, you know, I've seen people start playing Vanilla WoW recently, never played it before. Young kids, 15, 16, 17 years old, were too young to even know what Vanilla was back in the day. They start playing today. They start playing, you know, on, they start playing on Nost and stuff like that. <clears throat> and they have the exact same experiences that we did. The way they describe it, how emotional they get when, when talking about it. Right. It still capture mm. it's, it still captures people. It captivates imaginations. And, I'll um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Go ahead, Sizzips. Go ahead. I was going to say, for me, like those sort of like low key chilling conversations that you mentioned, um, those are always a byproduct of having to work together. You know, like, it's like one of you mentioned, you know, you're, you're doing a quest and you make a friend, like Nixium said, and then that leads to that sort of relationship. And so I think just because Classic WoW necessitates those, those initial teamwork interactions, you'll make mm -hmm. friends, you'll have those conversations again. Now, they might take place in Discord rather than, you know, in game slash party chat, but. I definitely think those interactions are going to continue. Mm -hmm. Here's I, I, I just oh. I was just going to add to that. So uh, I know for me, like I, I didn't play, I, I didn't really play WoW for a long time, especially not like on a competitive level since I hard quit in Cataclysm. Like I would kind of, I kind of dipped my toes in for wide, and I was like, ah, you know, this isn't it. I got jabated, right? And saying we're going back to Draenor and Outland, all that. Like I just thought of Outland and all this stuff, and no, it wasn't good. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I came back in Legion, uh, but I didn't even, I, I didn't have any desire to come back to WoW until uh, I had heard about like the nostalgia shut down and then I heard about like the private servers opening up and stuff like that and then that's whenever I started playing uh, and then eventually started streaming and stuff and that kind of gave me a uh a desire to check out Legion, but my stream was going pretty well, and I was like, okay, I'm not going to worry about it until I got banned. Then I then I actually tried it out, um, and and yeah, I mean, I, I just think it's so like, uh, it, I whenever I first stepped into Vanilla WoW again, 
on a private server, right? And this will be the same experience or a very similar experience that a lot of people have playing Classic who may have played WoW in the past, may have played Vanilla in the past. It's not the same exact thing, but it's a different feeling, but it's a very, very good feeling and it's very, very exciting. And there's a lot of stuff that you're going to go through. And as much as people want to say, like Tip said, oh, everybody knows everything and this and that. No, they don't. And, and no, I no, think like don't. I've talked about this before where the meta in Classic WoW and the meta in private servers and the meta on WoW Classic, like retail vanilla versus private servers versus WoW Classic, they're going to be three different metas because of certain things that are going to be different. For example, like the 16 debuff slots in WoW Classic, whenever that comes out, and there's all kinds of stuff. You're starting with 1.12 talents. You started with 1.12 talents on private servers as well. Uh, there's a lot of things that are different. Like, for example, stay safe. You're 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 in for a good time, I think. Stay safe in in Wild Classic. Just the way Shadow Priests are going to be in raids, and you play a Warlock, and Warlocks kind of sucked in the beginning of Retail Vanilla, and then by the end of it, getting ready for Burning Crusade, they were pretty pretty stinking good, you know. Um, yeah, so, I'm yeah. playing the late game, man. I'm only playing Warlock in Classic because I'm waiting for Classic TBC. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So mm -hmm. no, it's it's going to be good, right? Um, I I think it's. Uh, uh, that's just kind of how I feel about it in general. Uh, yet another question. I kind of want to get along with some of the other stuff. I mean, we can talk forever, but go ahead, Asmin. And, uh, All right. Oh, I, I know, I know. Answer, but go on. I, I wanted oh. to give one, one point of riddles that I started playing Black Desert, and mm -hmm. I had some really great memories interacting and playing with people on there and being part of a guild, and we would sit in, like, I think it was, like, TeamSpeak or something like that until, like, 7 a.m. and just talk about life and farm trees. And it seems like such a ridiculous thing but i feel like it, it is possible to have it again I, I absolutely do feel that way will it be the same as the first time i, I don't think so but it, it'll be meaningful enough for people to have an experience that they'll remember exactly exactly well i mean for me personally I, I mean i always say this i would never play on a private server but if i did all right, and I did play Nost, and I know life to that shit, like, mm -hmm. during Warlords of Draenor. I would say that, for me personally, like, I did recapture that feeling entirely. I, or, I mean, I didn't recapture that feeling. Dude, mm -hmm. it, was, it was amazing, like, for me. Because, like, for someone like me, I mean, I'm in a unique position. Because, I mean, some people know this, some people don't. Like, I didn't get to hit level 60 back in Classic. I was level 58 when BC came out. And so a lot of stuff in Classic is still a mystery to me. I don't know where to get, like, the best, like, shoulders for, like, the warrior class at level 60. I don't know. I didn't even know about that Whirlwind Axe quest line until Mr. Tips Out made that epic video about it. I was like, man, dude, the Whirlwind Axe quest line, that looks so cool. <laughs> like, there's still so much mystery for even someone like me who played Classic back in the day and who hasn't you know no life on private servers there's still plenty of stuff to consume and for me personally when i was playing on wasn't playing on those servers it was like i couldn't go like 10 minutes like after logging in without being in a group with someone and talking to them and grouping mm -hmm. up to kill hogger or to kill defias in westfall or questing in the wetlands or anything and that's what made it special. Like, within no time at all, my friends list was completely filled up. And when that server shut down and I logged in for the last time and said goodbye to all those people, it mm -hmm. was like, it like made me feel something. Right. Like, like I felt something. Yeah. And I don't want to talk about it on stream because it'd be a little corny. But <laughs> <laughs> No, dude, that's, that's how it is. I mean, like, I, I, had, a, I had a similar feeling... Uh, even though even though I didn't play Nos and I started playing uh, on, on the next round, uh, I, whenever my guild broke up, this was after I got banned, uh, my guild broke up, I was the guild leader, and uh, like I'm telling you, every like penny in the gold bank that we had, every piece of copper, we, I was just like, I was buying consumables for like pugs, I was buying stuff for guildies, I was buying stuff for everybody, trying to just keep the guild together, because after I got banned from streaming, uh, it became really hard to recruit, and on top of that, they just announced Classic, so a lot of people had kind of, like, fallen out of the private server scene, and mm. I, like, I mean, it that was hard, like, because your guild in Vanilla WoW, your guild was like your family, actually, I think, mm. Asmund, it was that night, we were talking, like, I was on Discord with you, Asmund, we were playing PUBG with McConnell, and uh, I was just like, I, I was I was pretty beat up. Yeah, you yeah. Were not, I remember like you're actually really bothered about it. Which, yeah, 
is a real contrast for me. Whenever my guild broke up, I stole the guild bank and transferred it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, I, I just, like, for me, it was just, like, the feeling of, like, I, I felt like, uh, it, it, it kind of felt like I like I, I I had failed right and your your guild is it's so tight knit and uh, there's people it's like why why the hell is this guy in this position why the hell is this guy doing this but at the end of the day like you, you got the one guy I mean you guys who watch the old streams like you got deputy for example and he's kind of like the drunk uncle in the raid and it's like deputy like I love you but shut the hell up dude <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you, you always have that guy and and it's it's and everybody like does their part and everybody pulls so hard to like push through and we got we literally we pugged we pugged I think we were we pugged 15 players and we got eight out of nine AQ, but it's because I literally dumped the entire guild bank into uh, consumables for, for pugs and stuff. And we lost out on some loot, but you know, we had this discussion with officers and we were like, okay, like if we have this many pugs, you know, we're going to give them loot or whatever. And I, and I said like, no, look, if we're, if we want to have anything actually work, if we want to bring pugs in, if we want to have people come into the raid, we're going to have to give them a fair shot at loot. And yeah, like we lost out on stuff, but we at least got eight out of nine in AQ before, you know, we eventually disbanded and some of us went into another guild and, uh, you know, I kept playing after that and, and eventually like cleared Nax, but, uh, you know, playing my rep paladin, but it, I mean, it's just, it's, it's very like your, your friends and the community and people that you're involved in, you know, kind of like you whenever Nosh shut down Nixium, uh, it, it really sucks to lose that. And it, it's on a different level and it's, it's slightly different, but at the, at its core, it's the same thing. Right. And, and that's a lot how I felt whenever, uh, whenever that happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and hopefully this will be one of the big positives of Classic WoW, of having Vanilla WoW be sort of offered in a mainstream <clears throat> avenue, right? You don't have to worry about your character progress being lost or your friends list being lost, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you don't that's have another to worry thing. About, like, you don't have to worry about, like, dumb admin drama happening behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. head admin's yeah. girlfriend cheats on him and then he gets mad and deletes the server like all right <laughs> like, yeah you only have to worry yeah. about stupid company drama uh yeah, yeah i know drama. Drama. Right. Hey, yeah. Speaking, speaking of, of that, which yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit uh okay. good transition yeah Who so wants basically to, wants to poke it with the stick yeah, I'll, uh, I'll I'll pick up the stick. So basically, we we had the earnings report come out. Uh, you know, we all listened to it yesterday, and uh, and a lot of it listened. A lot of us listened to it on stream. Uh, I actually, if you haven't listened to it yet, I posted it on my YouTube channel. If you guys want to go to my YouTube channel, S Fan TV, uh, and if you guys haven't followed, stay safe. Tips. Nixium and Asmongold as well. Follow them on Twitch, follow them on YouTube, follow them on Twitter. Uh, all their links are on the screen right there. So please give them a follow or a YouTube sub, uh, Twitch Prime sub, whatever you want to do. Please do that. Yeah, it's all right there. Um, but on my YouTube channel, I posted the, the call if you guys want to check that out. Um, there was, uh, I think, what happened in that call, and it wasn't just the call, it was the, the events surrounding it, right? About 800 layoffs. Uh, yesterday from Blizzard, which is an, an insane number, especially given that they said they were uh, reporting big profits, right? They, they said it was their, their biggest profits that they've had in a long time, or was that the record? Most, I think it was record, record ever, right? No record profits. Right? Well, right. So so record. Like, to sort of unpackage that, it was record profits for Activision Blizzard, which, which includes King and Activision products. So Mobile True. Candy Crush games and Call of Duty. Um, so while there were record Activision Blizzard profits, I think that like the Blizzard, Overwatch, Hearthstone, World of Warcraft profits were below where they expected it to be. They also said that Battle for Azeroth saw an expected decline. They expected mm -hmm. Battle for Azeroth to see a decline, which is sort right. of... It's kind of funny. It's um, not very good, yeah. Well, they're, just yeah. Saying, they're just saying that so it doesn't sound bad. Right. right. I mean, like, mm -hmm. they had a decline in Cataclysm. There was a decline in Mists of Pandaria. There was a big decline in Wad. There was a decline right. in Legion. I mean, well, actually, well, we don't know that, right? But, I mean, based off of every third-party metric possible, there was a decline in Legion, and absolutely with PFA. So it's like, yeah, oh, we expected this to happen, which makes it sound like it was a controlled fall rather than mm -hmm. just, like, a plummet. Right. And, you know, it makes it seem like, you know, they did this on purpose or they expected it to happen, which is in a way slightly better. And it makes people feel more confident. Yeah, I, I, don't I, I, think... I, don't I don't know which one's worse to say, like, yeah, we, we planned to, like, make our game like die more 
or like, oh shit, we didn't know well, this would happen. We'll do better next I, time. I think the nuance I think, is a little bit different because any right. game is going to have a huge hype period and then have a decline. And mm -hmm. if you look at the graph of like Burning Crusade and Wrath and Vanilla, for example, those games defied that. And mm -hmm. I would say they are the exception and certainly not the rule. Like the right. truth is that, yeah, any game you'd expect to have that happen. But WoW was so good back then that it didn't. Yeah, and, and the genre wasn't as, uh, I wouldn't say the genre was as mainstream. Like, sure, there were a lot of MMOs around back then, like, even before that, right, with EverQuest, Dark Age of Camelot, all kinds of games. But the genre became so much more mainstream uh, after Vanilla WoW had come out. And over time, you know, it got involved in the media. I mean, whether it was, like, the South Park episode or the Leroy Jenkins video taking off and it kind of turning into, like, a, you know, a normie meme a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, that, that was, like, a whole thing. Like, WoW became, like, this its, its own thing. Like, there was its own culture surrounding WoW. And uh, that, that certainly helped kind of grow those sub-numbers through Vanilla and through Burning Crusade. And Wrath, I think it grew, like, half a million, I think. It, 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 was, it was still growth, but it mostly leveled out compared to the first two. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I think it's... Uh, I, I think yesterday was... To me, it was more evidence and more... It, like, there's this whole narrative of, like, Activision is taking over, right? And I, I think yesterday was just a really, just another strong piece of evidence towards that, where it's like, this isn't Blizzard anymore, it's Activision Blizzard. And, uh, I mean, just how they talk, right? I mean, they talk a ton about Call of Duty, and, and that's, that's I mean, that's the company, right? Of course they're going to talk about Call of Duty. Of course they're going to talk about Candy Crush and mobile games, that's what King does. Uh, but a lot of the concerns that players have is, it's not so much that they're doing these things, is are these things going to take away from what Blizzard is? Is Activision going to not see what Blizzard does and what Blizzard has done for years to be profitable? And because the numbers don't match up, they say, okay, like you guys need to do something different. Like we're gonna get rid of this and we're gonna add more mobile. That's what people are scared of. It's not necessarily the addition of mobile, it's replacing something with yeah. mobile or other avenues. So can I ask you guys a question? This is something I genuinely don't know and maybe you guys know, I'm not sure. We saw Bungie recently split from Activision Blizzard. What are the chances that, I mean, I don't even know if it's possible. Can Zero. Blizzard split from Activision? Zero? Zero chance. You've yeah. looked into it? Okay. It's not going to yeah. happen. It's, yeah. it, Bungie, or, uh, Bungie was under a developer contract, so they were still technically a third party. There weren't any assets tied between them and Activision, whereas Blizzard, no, their, their assets are, are, are intertwined, so to speak. So it would it's mm. like, it's one company. Um, it could still, like, you know, legally speaking, you could split them up, but uh, it would be a much more rigorous and, and just tumultuous process, and it would mm. require so many more approvals and stuff. I mean, I, talking about yesterday, I think yesterday, uh, in, in you know, you've got to look at it multiple in multiple different lenses. Um, if you are an investor yesterday, you heard exactly what you wanted to hear. Uh, more focus on Eastern markets and global strategies, mm -hmm. increased investment on mobile platforms, which, you know, whether or not we let, whether or not we want to admit it, it's the largest growing uh, gaming platform in the world. And uh, again, you know, sticking to key franchises that have been proven successful in the past instead of innovating. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, um, when it comes to investors versus consumers, they're, uh, I, I guess, like, we're at odds, basically. Right. Uh, their interests do not align with our interests as players this time around. And uh, as a result, it really sucks. I mean, we want, I, I, just guessing from you guys and everybody else, we want innovation. We want new IPs. We want new franchises. Yeah, we want old franchises to, to come back to their former glory as well. But, you know, if you told me, should Blizzard bring back Classic or hypothetically Blizzard design an MMO with the same principles of Classic but a new game, Nine times out of ten, I'd ask for the new game first, you know, mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. And obviously, you know, we're not mobile gamers. Most of us are PC gamers. A lot of us don't play mobile games except very casually when you're, you know, taking a dump after Chipotle or something <laughs> yeah. like that, you know. Yeah. So uh, it's unfortunate. Um, the call was successful, I think, from a company standpoint, but obviously from a consumer standpoint, you know, hearing these things, hearing that, you know, the vast mm -hmm. majority of, of community managers got laid off and customer support got laid off and stuff like that. It's mm -hmm. very distressing. Definitely distressing. Yeah. They also did say. I, I think you're right. Like I think they. I think they said the right things to appease their uh, their their shareholders. They also said 2019 will be a low key year. Not much coming out. They also said zero new major frontline releases in 2019. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, so obviously they don't consider Classic WoW to be a major frontline release because they've said right. Classic that, WoW is going to be summer think. 2019. 
Classic is canceled, dude. Just listen. No, classic is not canceled. Classic is not canceled. No, I, I, I totally agree with you, Stay Safe. That's what I think. I think they don't see classic as a big. Uh, it, it's not going to be a big. Uh, kind of financial staple like it's not going to pull in a bunch of revenue on its own uh whenever it's released i i think that they're underestimating the amount of value they're going to get now i understand given that classic you're not going to have to pay for you're not going to have to buy like a box copy or you know a digital copy whatever you're not going to have to pay a separate fee uh it's built into the current wow subscription so they could be looking at it as a sort of like oh this kind of cannibalizes our current market and sure it might there might be some people who play retail wow right now who probably will not play retail wow uh come classic release i don't know who that might be but um no, I, I think that uh, I, I think that sure there's some of that, but the amount of subs that they're going to increase from the people who don't play at all, and are now going to start playing classic, I think is going to be huge, and I and I think it's something that's going to be. Uh, it might not be a big boost and a big spike this year, but it's something that's going to last over the course of many years as long as classic is done the right way. Oh well, yeah, it, absolutely. Um, I just want to say real quick, like. It, it is very likely that they will not monetize Classic WoW as much as they have monetized Retail WoW or Hearthstone or Overwatch or Call of Duty. Like, I, I think the money that they stand to make from Classic WoW is so little, so little compared to every other every other game IP that they have right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like you, you're saying, like as opposed to like a full release, or you're talking about a current game that they have out. Current games, like, like Classic WoW, just just the just the revenue that they make from from subscribers um, is yeah. is so little compared to what they make from a game like Overwatch or Retail WoW, where people are paying a sub fee as well and as loot boxes and, and stuff, loot yeah. boxes and mounts and toy like and box price, box price too. Yeah, true. Yep. Can't forget about that. Yep. I, I agree. I mean, like, obviously, I, I feel like Classic WoW is going to have, like, its own core audience, but it's not going to be, like, some massive thing. And also, if Classic WoW is included with the subscription for the current game, then it's just purely a positive. Like, anybody who's, like, going to play WoW, they have this extra thing that they can now take part in. It's going to absolutely increase the amount of subs mm -hmm. because there's going to be tons of people who get bored on current wow and play classic and vice versa i i yeah. feel like one thing that blizzard might not be taking into account is the amount of people that you know for nostalgic reasons go back and they play classic wow and they are the people that jay allen brack was talking about you think you do but you don't and they don't and you know what mm -hmm. maybe some of them will try out bfa and they'll like it and yeah, it's yeah. a win-win yeah. for the entire world of warcraft community and I think that's a huge component of like one of these classic and retail conversations is that we're both on the same team. We might have different goals, but we both want World of Warcraft as a whole to succeed. And I think if one side succeeds, the other side is going to see benefit I think so out too. of that. Yeah, I, I think so too. I think you're going to have a lot of. Uh, I think you're going to have a, a portion of people who are going to play both, or they want to try one, they end up trying out the other, or vice versa. Uh, I think that's. I think that's certainly something that could be a thing. Uh, one thing that is going to impact that crossover between retail and classic a lot is is are, are, are you going to have to buy like a game box to play classic wow if you have bought retail can you play classic wow without buying like the classic wow game if you oh, like because that that could really hinder because that's what twenty dollars right? yeah we don't yeah. know that i don't think no we don't in a perfect world like i would say yeah if you have a, an active like subscription and you have the current expansion you can play classic wow or something like that and yeah. that way to buy like another game. And I think that would just be a smart thing for Blizzard to do, to re-release a box edition, you know, have like the midnight release events at GameStops. I mean, like it, there are tons of different things that Blizzard could do to really hype up and cash in on this nostalgia because it's a one-time only thing. Like this mm -hmm. is a once in a, in like the entire history of gaming, like they will never be able to do something as mm. hyped up as this before you guys remember like there were more upvotes whenever classic wow got announced than whenever donald trump won the president yeah. people I didn't care know about that. this a lot yeah, yeah. <laughs> people care about this a lot it is well, a yeah. massive thing it's impacted mm. the entire generation of players and, and like gamers yeah like, i think so i mean you look at Look, look at a lot of big uh, look at a lot of the biggest streamers now, you know a lot of those people either they they started streaming in WoW or they started their their online like gaming careers in WoW Every, what do you think, single, every single person that, that's true yeah. What did you say? Yeah, you, know, I was like, you, you look like you had something to say next Uh, Yeah, I mean I'm still of the opinion that classic is gonna be bigger than retail Wow 
and with how like bfa yeah, has been like in decline like that video that you all laughed at not you guys here you know i'm talking to you chat you're like nah, that's, that's crazy how could you say that classic will be bigger than bfa uh, i'm mm -hmm. still standing by my statement asmongold's right this is a this is a big thing and people are hyped and people are interested for classic and um there's something else i was gonna say something really important but i don't remember what it was i, I like listening you know i like I don't get to talk to these guys very often, so I like hearing what they got to yeah. say. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I totally agree, man. I think Classic WoW is going to, I mean, at launch, obviously surpass retail. And I think whenever, wherever it levels out in plateaus, I think that will still be surpassing retail WoW active player base. Mm -hmm. yeah. I really do think yeah. that. I hope yeah. you guys are right. Yeah, yeah I think. I, I think yeah. And, yeah. and I, I want to go back to the earnings call just real quick, because Stacey, if you alluded to it, actually Stacey made a really good video about this this morning. Um, regarding you know profitability and stuff like that mm. i think as bad as the earnings was from like an activision blizzard perspective versus consumer perspective i mm. think we as the classic community specifically might have gotten lucky and it's the fact that activision seems very focused on rmt microtransactions but also their frontline major release pro uh, products <coughs> And I think they just don't consider Classic to be a major release product. So mm -hmm. we might get lucky in the sense that the cash shop fears for Classic and all that stuff, um, it just I don't think it's going to happen because Classic is flying so low on the radar mm -hmm. compared to their other games that are about to ship. Right. So we might, we might dodge the Activision bullet because they just they don't see the potential. The, the I thing that I was going to say... Uh, real fast. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. No, he was I just remember throwing it in. Gonna say, just got to yeah. sneak it in. It's the fact that people were saying this in the chat, and you guys probably have heard of this little game called Apex Legends that has been taken yes. off lately. So yeah. many big streamers are playing this game and giving it so much publicity at the moment, and it's just a rapidly growing title. And there are so many big streamers here on Twitch and across YouTube and everywhere that are interested in playing Classic WoW. They want to stream it. They want to play it. And if we look at other games and how they've grown because of like uh, the, the community just streaming it, making videos about it, promoting it, free promotion. Again, it just adds more fuel to that fire of, I, I genuinely believe Classic is gonna be a lot bigger than I think anyone is expecting. I, well, I honestly think it's gonna blow up. Apex, well, I think hit like 600K viewers on Twitch, right, insane. yesterday? Well, yeah. BFA launch was it about 500k, wasn't it? At one point, am I am I remembering that right? It was it was. It, it's hard for me to remember the. the it was it was number. some it was some insane number, right? And uh, I think classic guys, launch. Do you guys know does bigger. does Blizzard do sponsored streams for WoW? Like, do they yes, do that? No, they do. Okay. Oh. They do. Yeah, they no. Yeah, because I saw uh, Giant Waffle did one. Okay. Yeah, I saw yeah. Giant Waffle did one. The thing is, like, you, you mm -hmm. with the the other streamers on Twitch, there's a lot of people that you probably don't even know are like huge WoW fans, and they've played WoW in the past. And people like Greek, Greek has a video on YouTube of him getting the time lost proto drink. Yeah, he played WoW, yeah. XQC played WoW. Tim the Tapman loves WoW. Yeah. Um, Shroud loves Shroud. WoW. All of these people that you might not even think are WoW players because it's not what their normal Twitch or mm -hmm. streams are Summit. about. These are actually huge, you know, really big fans of WoW. Mm -hmm. It's actually crazy. It, it's totally insane. Yeah. Yep. I, I'm hoping that Blizzard gives us pro progressive legacy, though, because, I mean, if they don't, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a big advocate for progressive legacy. I would like to see those classic servers turn into BC servers mm -hmm. one day. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I mean, obviously the content's going to be consumed. People will get bored after like, you know, eight years of classic, obviously. So uh, I, do, I do hope that we get progressive legacy down the road, but that's a subject I, for another time. I agree. And I mean, at the bare minimum, they have to continue offering new classic WoW servers, right? Because if they don't, we're just going to be in the situation we're in right now that we've been in the last several years as well, where if you want to play vanilla, you have to play on a private server. Like if, if they if they only do it for two years and then they stop. OK, guys, that was it. Like, oh, right, right, right. We're, we're back yeah, yeah. where we're at. They're right going to go back to private servers. It doesn't make any yeah. sense. So they need to make fresh. I think they should progress on to BC and whatnot. Uh, I think I think all that's very important. Um, so as far as getting more classic news uh, in the near future, uh, we haven't really heard much recently. The only thing we've heard is actually a post from, uh, this was from Yithisins, I, I think, a couple of weeks ago. 
Yithitsens, uh, who is now former community manager, and we can talk about that in a, in a little bit, but he says, we've been working on a number of things to hopefully get out to you guys soon. Nothing to share on it specifically right now, but work is happening every day, both on Classic as well as things we want to communi communicate to you guys about Classic. Uh, I myself look forward to sharing more details in the coming future as I've been very excited and interested in seeing and hearing what all the team is doing, and we know you guys are eager to hear and to see these things too. Um, one thing real quick, even just like reading through that a little bit, I, I get kind of frustrated because if if you've been following the classic community at all, uh, you know whether it's on Reddit or you're in Discords or you're on forums, you know how active Yethizens was as a community manager, and unfortunately, like he was, uh, he was one of the guys who got laid off. He was one of the 800, and uh, it's it actually it completely blows my mind. And for me, like I, it's 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 a little bit more personal with me. Uh, because after my ban, I, I tried emailing different people, I tried messaging different people on Discord, Twitter, and try and find out like, hey, what are the rules, what can I do, what are, what are the proper, how, how do I be a classic WoW YouTuber, content creator, uh, if I can't do this on private servers? And, and he's the one, out of everybody who I tried to get in touch with, he's the one who was willing to talk to me and was willing to like establish a relationship with me eventually, uh, after me being like, oh, like this you know bad guy, he just got DMCA'd and all this stuff, and, uh, just knowing how much that guy cares about wow about classic about the community oh, yeah. and it, it 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 totally blows my mind and you know we got to hang out a lot at blizzcon and uh it, it's it's something that on a more personal level outside of just the personal you know how, how big i think he was for the classic community and how he was pretty much the only means of communication that we had uh both as a community and as content creators for me personally that's something i was like really really upset about um I got a little bit upset on stream yeah. about it too. Like for this guy, it very clearly wasn't a job. Like Edison's is a really, really nice guy. It wasn't his job. Like this, this was his mm -hmm. passion. It was his dream job, right? I mean, when we were down there for BlizzCon, he he contacted us and said, "Hey, can I give you guys a tour of the Blizzard HQ?" So he gave us a tour, and he was so eager to show us like all the cool things they had there. And uh, I mean, this is a guy that he he loves vanilla WoW. He loves classic WoW. He loves retail mm -hmm. WoW. Like he like he 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 bled this stuff, right? Yeah. It's always really sad to see him go. Yeah, yeah, and. uh and he actually does have a Twitch account if you guys want to give him a follow on Twitch. Uh, he might even join me on stream after after the show a little bit later tonight. Uh, it's twitch.tv slash Sakar, S-A-K-A-A-R, if, uh, if you guys want to give him a follow on Twitch. And uh, he, he streams every now and then, but he, he might join me a little bit later tonight. And uh, we, we can have a chat and just, just hang out a little bit. But, um, but yeah, so... Uh, basically, what he was saying, kind of getting back to the point, is uh, that hopefully we're going to get some more classic news soon. And this is something that, you know, we've been hoping for a while now. Oh, he's here. <laughs> Great. <laughs> What's up, dude? Yeah, yeah, he's here. Nice. Um, so yeah, this is this is something that you know we've been hoping to to get some classic news more soon. We we thought that we might get a beta by now. You know, whenever the classic demo was out at BlizzCon time, we thought we would get a beta by now. But um, I think. At this point, hopefully next month. Uh, I don't know. Who knows? What do you guys think? You're pretty optimistic, is what I think. <laughs> maybe, uh, yeah. maybe. I, I'm I thinking know. it's going to be any day now. Any day now? Yeah. I mean, so what we've seen with the last three or four WoW expansions is like they start alpha phase about seven months before full release, right? So we are in that time frame right now. If it comes out in September, which is the end of the summer window, it would come out this month if they're on a seven month time frame. Who knows if they're going to treat Classic WoW like a WoW expansion, if they're going to have a seven-month alpha beta phase. Who knows? But, like, it, I really, really hope they, that they do one. Like, I hope they have an alpha. I hope they have a beta. I hope that they're not just thinking about just not doing it, right? I really think it has a lot of value. The it's more really, really the more turbo nerds they can get in this game, touching everything, you know, <laughs> doing quests, activating items, whatever, like, it's just going to be better for everyone. So I really hope they end up doing it soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, I think having having a testing period where they can go and they can stress test launch, they can uh, test out different things, and and kind of like Stacey have said, get all like these these big vanilla brains, okay, get them in the game. <laughs> Yeah, just just get the big vanilla brains together. Just go full on vanilla brain. Just maximum 500 IQ to get them to go in there and to say, okay, like I noticed this thing is wrong. Like I, I know, like even the smallest little things. Like I noticed on the classic demo, if I jumped and I turned, 
while having my auto attack active, I would swing my hips like I do in Retail WoW, but if I'm doing it normally on the 1.12 client, I'm always static. Now, if I jump normally, I would be totally static, uh, but it's just little stuff like that because they are downporting a lot of stuff, and uh, these little things that, you know, you might have your eyes more trained to notice because you're, you know, you know sometimes you see something and you're like, something's different and I don't know what it is, and then you go and you break it down, oh, that's it. Uh, people are going to be able to catch stuff like that, and I think a beta beta period is really important, or at least like testing phases or something like that would be really important to get the community involved and make people feel like they're a part of it. I mean, we've seen the we've seen the forum threads, and we've talked about our opinions on like four phases of content release is not nearly enough. I, I think it should be at least six. We've talked about the right click report feature uh, many times. Uh, the right click report feature we've talked about sharding we've talked about loot trading how all these things can have a negative impact on the game and we're hoping that uh, you know we're using our words the right way and we're able to actually make an impact and uh, whether it's you guys in the community who are vocal about this whether it's us as content creators who are vocal about this uh, I, I think it's really important for us to uh, you know be vocal the right way and to give positive feedback and, and uh, or give feedback positively excuse me uh, about we what we like and don't like so. I'm curious. I'm curious what Asmin and Nixie and what you guys feel, how you guys feel about the beta. Do you guys want to see a long beta, a short beta? I mean, what are your guys' thoughts on it? It, it? Honestly, I'd like to see like a two week period for like a beta and then no more. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'd like to see something and that way, like, the game comes out. I wouldn't want it to be like where all the hype for the game happens before the game comes out. Yeah. And like that would mm -hmm. kind of be disappointing. Now, that I think is unrealistic. I, I think they're just going to do a beta the same the way that they did BFA. But in like a perfect world for me, I would like to see no PTRs and like no raid testing until the raids actually come out. Like I, I'd really like to see that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, that way it would be like a truly like new experience for a lot of the people. And uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. I just think it would make it more special. But I can see why, obviously, they're probably not going to do that. Mm. I just want to see, okay. like like Asmongold said, I just want to see uh, the shortest beta possible, to be honest. Because I think about, you know, some guy, Billy, you know, he gets on the, uh, you know, the Go beta ahead. and he makes friends with a dude named Arnold. And then the beta ends, you know, and then the classic servers come out, you know, like hopefully they kept in contact with each other, um, like outside of, outside of, uh, the, the beta so that they can play together on the exact same server so i don't know like I, I really want it to be as short as possible so that the community can start building itself as soon as possible so i'm more in favor of like a really short beta um two mm -hmm. weeks whatever but really? uh i just want to see the thing out um i want to see uh i want to see it out and i want to see the game working its magic uh but yeah i mean obviously there is a lot of stuff to uh beta test whether it be like animations just small changes you know bugs that uh yeah. new bugs like new new classic yeah bugs, new bugs you know? yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, my concern so. is if it's if it's a two-week beta that's like just enough time to get to 60 and that's without you know taking time to submit reports and bug tickets and stuff like that so i i think it should be longer like i think it should be much longer um okay. and maybe handed out very selectively um, to people that they know, like that have a, if, if it, maybe they could look at their, at the last couple betas and alphas that they've done and they give uh, beta access selectively to people that have a known history of submitting tickets and reporting bugs to those people that are proven to be turbo nerds. Um, I don't know, but uh, I think, I think that longer is better. Do you want like, in terms of population, do you want like a really like tight community, like are applying the beta or do you want it to be like, Hi hey man, you beta tested BFA, so here you go. Like, you know, uh, like over one hundred thousand beta keys go out, or who knows how many. Right. It's it's um, hard to say like what the appropriate number is. Asmin, what were you gonna say? Oh, nothing. Oh, sorry. I, I I was just gonna I was gonna say like if you think about the number, I think if they went with because you gotta you gotta see like okay. How many how many keys do we give out and how many do we expect to actually like play and log in because I'm sure they give out a lot of keys of people who like log in once kind of screw around a little bit and leave, you know, uh, or they never even log in at all. So it's like what's what's the retention rate that they've had on on BFA and, and on other uh, other things that they've done betas for right other expansions. Um, 
I don't know, like, let's say if they gave out like 10,000 keys and had like uh, stress testing periods or something like that and just said like, okay, let's let's try and have everybody log in. I think I mentioned this two or three classic casts ago, but let's have everybody log in at once and no sharding, no dynamic respawn, no new system put into the game to account for a larger, uh, larger population. We're just going to put everybody in the game at once and just kind of see how it plays out. And that's one testing period. And it might be like for a few yeah. hours. Then you do another testing period where you do the same thing and then there is sharding and see how that plays out. Uh, and, and for them, I think it does two things. One, it gets the community involved and it lets the community see like, OK, what all Blizzard is doing to, you know, work through the, the obstacles that they have to work through in order to recreate this game. It does that too. Uh, it also allows them to just get an essentially like a live test. Like I know a lot of times, like whenever I'm doing like DPS tests and stuff like that on, uh, on classic, it's like, I see videos of like, Oh, I did this thing. And it's like, yeah, like you were hitting a training dummy and, and you had like all these buffs and stuff and you were using GM commands. And it's like, sure, of course you're going to do that much that, like damage or whatever. You need to take what you're testing and you need to put it in a raid environment where you have to move for different mechanics. You have to like do different things at certain times. You can't just press one button and it macros like all your stuff together. So it's, I think a live test is, uh, is so much different than, than something that's like simulated or something that's estimated in this case. Uh, I, I think if they, just have everybody run in and see what happens. I think that's the best case scenario. I agree. And I, I think I think on top of like sharded servers and non sharded servers, they should have non sharded servers of varying population caps. They have a server with 3000 cap, 4000, 5000, 6000, and they see which server is like the most optimal, most fun is holding up, you know, can players kill mobs in a reasonable time. I'd like to see that also. The only other thing that I kind of worry about when it comes to a long ass beta is the fact that there's a lot of people uh, including myself, I'm not really interested in playing a classic beta. Like, I want to play classic. Like, goddamn. But mm -hmm. I don't really want to play a beta because you might as well be playing on a private server because it doesn't matter, like, what you do on there. Like, sure, release, like, a two-month beta. Give people time to get to level 60. But as soon as that beta's done, you lost all of it. All your progress, mm. everything you did. And I understand it's beta, so, it's for testing and yada, yada, yada. But that's why I'm just concerned about uh, populations. Mm. Yeah, that's something I was going to ask you guys. I mean, let's say they have a classic beta. You can do everything. You can do. You can go one to sixty. You can do all the dungeons you want. Do you guys? It lasts four weeks. Let's say it lasts four weeks. Do you guys I, have I beta think... for four weeks and level to sixty and do dungeons? They I think I. I... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> if there is a four week beta, do you level okay. to sixty and do all the dungeons, or do you just sort of goof around? I, I do what my stream wanted me to do, honestly. And yeah. then mm -hmm. whenever the game came out seriously, I would play it seriously because mm -hmm. I, I feel the same way that Nixium does. I don't want to build a castle on sand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For for me, it, I I would want to like map out my leveling route and, and do stuff like that because I, I've talked about this before. Um, I say that a lot, Frick. Uh, but I, I I'm. Uh, I think that there's a lot of things that are subject to change based on what we saw in private servers versus what we saw in, in retail vanilla and what we're going to see in classics. So I think to be able to go through and actually map everything out in classic as it's going to be released, I, I think that's going to be pretty valuable for me personally because uh, I hadn't speed leveled in the past. So this is going to be something new uh, for me. I always just kind of like have a good time level. Like it took me five weeks. The last time I leveled to 60, I think it took me five weeks of real life time and I PVP'd. I, I leveled professions. I did everything along the way and I, and I really, really enjoyed it. I think if I'm leveling on a PVP server while streaming, I'm going to have to speed level and rush through it. And then I might level an alt on a PVE server and, and really enjoy that uh, separately. So that's how I think it's going to go. Yeah. Are are you all going to just race to max level or uh, what are your plans? Race I'm going to get there basically as fast as I can, but I'm not going to do anything that's ridiculous. I'm not going to do like a 72 hour stream or anything like that. I'll do all the dungeons. I'll play through the game. I don't I don't know if they're going to have molten core available on release so I won't if they do then I'll have a different perspective on how fast I want to get to 60. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Definitely going very hard very fast. Um just like by by virtue of what Sfan said like I want to play on a PVP server but I recognize like unfortunately I'm not going to be able to play the game how I want to play it during that leveling process. So mm -hmm. you just got to make some sacrifices and go fast. And I do take like a lot of enjoyment in like the race, like the, the fresh server race, like there's something about it that's very, very exciting. It's a different mm -hmm. like kind of way to play the game, but it, I think it's got its own merits too. Mm -hmm. Sure. Right. Okay. 
And yeah. safer safe safe, yeah. Oh, I'm speeding. Yeah, I'm speeding. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, you, you're actually you were you were known as a very fast leveler back back uh, on on the private server days. You were known yeah. as a fast leveler. Yeah, and I used to spend a lot of time building warlock leveling routes and stuff. Um, I mean, you can't you can't define fun, right? You know, if if one person wants to do dungeons while they're leveling a level professions, mm -hmm. then uh, that's what they should do. If if you define fun as speed leveling, then that's what you should do. Whatever whatever you think is most fun. You can't I tell anyone how to play the game. I think I'll get there really fast either way. I mean, like, this time around, like, in BFA, uh, the only reason I didn't get Realm First 120 was I got disconnected for, like, an hour. At 110, I got Realm First 110. Uh, 100, I got Realm First Warrior 100. And uh, I was disconnected for, like, two hours. Uh, at 90, I got uh, almost Realm First 100 Warrior, or 90 Warrior. So, mm -hmm. like, I I'm, not, I'm not worried about leveling fast either way. Okay. Yeah, I'm about as fast in real life as I am in game, so uh, I got some work to do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, for me, I'm going to just kind of like Asmongold said, you know, you're kind of like at the mercy of the fact you're a streamer. So on my one character, oh, yeah. like my, my stream character, the public one, like, yeah, you know, I'll probably be leveling fast to out level the gankers. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I know they're coming because I'm playing on a PvP realm. Like, ain't no one stopping that. Mm -hmm. But I'll, of course, uh, <laughs> But I'll, of course, have, like, my private character that I'll play off stream that I can, like, really take my time with because I'm really going to, like, oh. I'm really going to, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to savor the journey, you know what I mean? You're going to have an mm -hmm. off stream character that you keep completely secret. Are you, are that's you guys right. going to do that also? Well, I do. That's, that's what I do with every game. Really? Yeah, yeah. I do it with WoW. I do it with ESO. I do it with everything. I have secret characters that I play. Mm -hmm. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I, I actually secretly have been playing Hello Kitty online off stream and I'm a you top too? player in the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, add me, man. Yeah. Yeah, I will. Yeah, just Hit add me. me. It's uh, yeah, uh, Splurgy Doodles is my name. Yeah, just nice, slash dude. friend. Yeah, it should be good. Mm -hmm. All right, man. Uh, Nate. So, <laughs> so real quick, Nate. guys, if you haven't followed Nixium, Asmongold, Stay Safe TV, Tips Out Baby, if you haven't followed them on Twitch, if you haven't followed them on Twitter, uh, and also sub to their YouTube channels and myself as well, if you guys want to follow my YouTube channel, S Fan TV, on every platform, uh, Twitter, YouTube, and all that, uh, you guys should definitely do that. Uh, if you guys like our content, Classic WoW content, we like to talk about Classic WoW, we're big fans of Classic. Uh, we do Classic Cast here on this channel, and this will be uploaded on YouTube. In case you miss anything, you guys can go sub to my YouTube channel. This will be uploaded on YouTube Whoa. Uh, in the future. Whoa. Yeah. Believe it or not, dude. Believe it or not, it will be uploaded. Um, you know, I, I S fan, uh, not to cut mm -hmm. you off, but like, there's one thing that's been kind of triggering me this entire time. Uh, your mouse is like over your beard. Oh, they can't see it. They can't see it. Oh, they can't? Okay, cool. Yeah, All right, yeah. Cool. All right, just making yeah, yeah. sure. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. I didn't so, want the whole thing to be ruined, you know what I mean? No, no, yeah, yeah, you're so. good. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, and also, uh, guys, if you want to tweet at us, speaking of Twitter, if you want to tweet at us with hashtag Classicast, uh, we can go into a little bit of Q&A. Uh, we, we do have to wrap it up soon. After the stream, after the Q&A, uh, well, not after the stream, but after the show, I'm going to continue to stream. And uh, like I said, Yithisins is going to join me on stream at some point for a little bit. And uh, we can we can talk to him a little bit and just kind of have a good time. I'm going to do a Twitch bounty. Uh, I have a Twitch bounty that I need to do. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll hang out and we'll have a good time for a few hours after stream. So... Uh, yeah, again, if you guys if you guys have any questions, we'll do a little bit of Q&A at the end before we have to wrap it up. And uh, that's just hashtag ClassCast on Twitter and, and go ahead and follow us and add us as well. Um, <clears throat> do you guys have anything else that you want to that you want to touch on before we move on? I let's mean, get some questions, question. man. Yeah, yeah. You want to go right into it? Sure. Yeah, let's do it. Um, how do you feel about new content being released with the vanilla philosophy in mind, such as Hydro Raid uh, with new gear to obtain? So, so this is from Hef Heresy. He's essentially asking... Do you're essentially asking about progressive content release post Nax? Uh, I think that that's something that whenever we, this actually came up at BlizzCon, didn't it? Uh, somebody asked the question at BlizzCon. Mm -hmm. They said that's something that's not even on the radar for them. Mm -hmm. um, the the current devs they were saying like, yeah, I mean, this is something that you know we're we're working on one step at a time and just trying to get the base game correct. And I, I think that's the biggest thing. And if if they can go and they can get the base game right, and then I think a lot of people want to see Burning Crusade and Wrath. A lot of people want what yeah. they used to have. That's what they're looking for. Uh, I think it could be cool. I really do think it could be cool. And, uh, like, all that's fine, but maybe that's a project down the road. I don't think that's a project right now. They so. should focus on doing Burning Crusade and Wrath. Like, there's no reason to try to reinvent mm -hmm. the wheel, literally. Yeah. You just make the same wheel again. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And it would be a slam dunk every time. And every time it yeah. would appeal to a different player base that, that no longer plays the game and stuff like that. Like, it, it would be ridiculous for them to go out of their way to develop new content just for vanilla. I've, I've heard a lot of people say OSRS, OSRS. You got to understand, Jagex, like, solely relies on RuneScape. They have other games... But like they literally killed RuneScape with a single update overnight, and they had to go back to OSRS. They had to develop additional content. Blizzard, Activision mm -hmm. Blizzard, doesn't need it the same way that Jagex needs OSRS. I don't know. Like I think it'd be kind of cool if in Classic WoW you could have like traits on maybe like two or three pieces of gear and a necklace you could level up. And, Titan uh, forging too, would, of course. Uh, yeah. yeah, like I Titan think that'd be a good idea. Cool. Yeah. You know, it'd be mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, that'd be great. Just Titan forging and you know, uh, group finder and all that stuff. It'd be great, right? I don't really. <laughs> yeah, that's, sar that's sarcasm. But we made a joke about this actually. We made a joke about this one time, and I got rage tweets from people. And then I was like, dude, it was a joke. I was like, oh, I literally just opened the stream. And I was like, I was oh. like, dude, come, like, you gotta relax, dude. <laughs> like, it's it's a joke. But dude, yeah. I have a really demanding job. Like, right, I don't true. have time to raid. I need LFR. Dude, mm -hmm. I work, like, as a cashier three hours a week, you know, for three hours for five days a week, man. Like, a really demanding job. I need LFR. You don't understand, man. True. Like, mm -hmm. Come on, man. Why are you so selfish? I sympathize. <laughs> you should play BFA. Yeah, you know, great. It, that's, I've heard of BFA. <laughs> I heard it's really good. Check it out. Yeah, it's a great you know? it's a great game. Uh, mm -hmm. So this question is from Wow Ferric. Uh, if wow, they do, pro wow, Farrick. He says if yeah, they do progressive, him. he's a good guy. He's a good guy. He's uh, he's following me on Twitter now. So this question is from Twitter. Uh, okay. If they do progressive legacy servers, which expansion do you guys want them to stop at? I'll uh, I'll go ahead and start. Actually, Raph. no, you guys Ooh, go ahead. This is a yeah. good question, man. I'll go last. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, I mean, I, I would say uh, just to keep things easy for them, stopping at Wrath, you have like some kind of. You know, you have some kind of artificial wall where you can say this was the original trilogy. This was the world before Cataclysm. This was, you know, mm -hmm. the, the old times. You could do that because the second you get into Cataclysm, then it just doesn't stop. And mm -hmm. uh, while, while I, I don't see anything wrong with that, I just think Blizzard doesn't want to recreate literally every single expansion. Um, I just think, you know, Wrath is like kind of the, the convenient stopping point and, and there's ways to to logically present it where it's like, yeah, this, this is the classic era, basically. Mm hmm. But yeah. uh, I guess I'll go before stay safe. Uh, so here's what I think. I think Wrath is a very... Uh, I, I think Wrath is a good stopping point in general. I think Wrath is a good stopping point. But I also think that by the time Wrath were to come out, you would get to the point where this is like five, six years down the road and people are going to really miss Cataclysm at that point and they might want to do Cataclysm. And you might end up just like going through the whole thing again by the time it's over because think about how many years it's going to be since then. Like, there's going to be people who are playing WoW by the time Classic Wrath is out that have never played Cataclysm and won't want to play it. Now, me personally, I'm not a fan, right? Me personally, I, I, I would, I regret not playing Wrath. I do. I would like to do Classic BC Wrath. That's what I would like to do. But I wouldn't be surprised if they went beyond it. Uh, because who knows, like people's opinions might change in like five or six years, you know, that's just for me personally, it's wrath, but I, I think people's opinions might change and, uh, they might go with, uh, they might add to it. Stay safe. Go ahead and go. Uh, I think Asmund and Nixium should go. Oh, okay. Well, they, uh, didn't they? Oh, oh I, wrath. I, yeah, they, they both said wrath. Yeah. Oh, they said wrath, like really? Oh. Uh, well, I would like for them to stop at Wrath, but if they're going to go down the progressive legacy route, like, as soon as, like, Wrath comes out, oh, Wrath is out, you know, people doing Axe Ramos, there's going to be a community of people that are going to say, dude, like, we want Kata. Like, we want Kata. And Blizzard's like, well, I mean, we've already come this far. And then when Kata comes out, people are like, dude, I didn't get to play that Panda expansion. I really want those Pandas. And, like, they're yeah. going to do, like, Mists after that. Like, if you're going to do progressive legacy, like, I, I see them going the whole way. Like, you know, just recreating the whole experience. It's never going to happen, dude, because they're going to have to hire CS people for all of those different expansions because they're going to have to know everything about the expansion specifically. Like, logistically, mm -hmm. they're never going to do it. Like, Wrath is the most that we're ever going to get. No, I, I, don't, I don't know, man. Like, I want the, I just want them to stop at Wrath, but it just wouldn't surprise <laughs> me if they, like, tried to go the whole way. The, the, like, the dream, right? Like, the meta dream. And I don't know if you guys ever played, like, Ultima Online or even, like, like Minecraft, I, don't, I think Minecraft does stuff like this, but Minecraft? just to complete, <laughs> there you go. 
uh, to completely decentralize server hosting and allow communities to host their own private servers with profit sharing model uh, in between. A lot of games do this, very profitable games do this. Uh, so you could host any server you want and you could even modify that server if you want to do your own custom servers within within certain clients, that would be great too. Um, I, I just, I like that idea a lot. I like giving the power to the modders. I think you could see some really cool ideas come out of that. How'd that go just, with Elysium? Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> like in general, I mean, it works with other games, right? It worked very well with like Ultima Online and Minecraft. When it's when it's known, when it's like sponsored and endorsed by Blizzard, and mm -hmm. when there are certain channels you can go through to get approvals and whatnot, um, I think it can work really, really well. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's the dream scenario. Mm -hmm. and, and again, guys, we're we're taking questions from uh, we're taking questions from Twitter. Uh, if you guys want to hashtag Classic Cast at SFan TV at us at uh, follow us on Twitter, um, we're looking at some of these questions. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, like on that, on how far I'd like to see Classic Classic WoW go, like Classic TBC, Classic Wrath, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, for a long time, like I was on the outside, you know, my hobby, my passion, the version of of WoW that I loved, vanilla WoW. You know, I heard every dismissal in the book. You know, this is a bad version of the game. It takes no skill. It's not going to be cost effective, whatever. Every single way someone could dismiss what I loved, um, I heard it, right? The wall of no. It was all in the wall of no and more. Um, and so I don't want to be the guy that's like, you know, while personally, I don't have any interest in anything after Wrath. Like, I would probably play Classic Wrath. And then after that, I would completely dip out if they continued. But I don't want to be the guy that's like, okay, I got mine. Yoink. I got Classic WoW. Oh, you want Classic? Like, let's say eight years down the road there's a movement pushing for class freaking bfa or classic wad or whatever it is if there's people that want it and blizzard decides like they they it's worth the investment to do that i'm not gonna like i'm not gonna crap on that like i, I don't want to be the guy that's like i got mine sorry <laughs> uh good luck like i i would mm. i would i would support those people 100 percent, 100 percent. i would i think i think there's like a certain amount of integrity that uh that goes into that yeah so, I, I think so i mean if 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 people, if there ends up being a demand, right, for let's say like a classic cataclysm or something, and then you're dismissive of it, then how hypocritical is that? I mean, that's that's exactly the that's, same situation that's exactly that we've how been I in. Feel. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, because for sure. everything someone could say about classic BFA, like it's not fun, it's no skill, like anything, anything you could do to dismiss classic BFA, I guarantee someone has said that about classic vanilla. I yeah, guarantee. That's it. a really good point. No, of course. Yeah. Now, what's the likelihood that you know there's going to be people who want classic BFA? Not very likely, right? But with, you know, with that being said, if it were to happen, then and we were dismissive of it, that'd be pretty hypocritical, and and I think it'd be wrong. Um, here's a good question: Do you think the modern well? This is from Tommy Vega. Uh, do you think the modern WoW mentality, with all the improved approaches to min maxing and gameplay mastery, will lead to new end game metas in classic? Uh, I'll go ahead and start this one. Uh, this is something that's actually already happened. A, a lot of players in the in the private server scene are actually like top players. They're very good players uh, in retail. Wow, who uh, they had gotten bored of retail over the years, and then they took that mentality and what they did into the private server scene and what they did with Vanilla Wow. Uh, and you know, you have speed runs. You have people clearing like MC in like 20 minutes or so, uh, or even faster. Now, of course, it's like this is done on a private server, and like everybody's not 100 percent sure. Like what is accurate to retail vanilla or what is accurate to what is going to be wow classic but it doesn't necessarily dismiss what they're doing as far as like going and trying to find everything out to the nth degree and uh trying to cut down every second of time here and, and popping consumes here and moving here and doing this skip and that skip i don't think uh just because it may or may not be different doesn't change change what they're doing right and and the amount of work and effort that goes into it yeah. you guys have anything um i would say it already has i mean you look at the classic or sorry the private server meta right now i mean it's now all all into using these like you know special specific weapons right i think the best example is the feral druid helmet uh that you know like the power shifting or whatever you have people that are speed clearing raids i mean it, it's changed in a lot of ways right and i'm completely uh yeah absolutely it'll change mm -hmm. um do you guys have anything to add to that Nope. No, no, not really. Yeah. I, mean, yeah, I think, I think, I think it was pretty good. It's been sad. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, actually I know Asmin, Asmin has actually got to get going. You, you have a, uh, you have, you have a guest, I believe uh, a guest is coming to visit. I, I don't know who, yeah. uh, 
Uh, yeah, but he has Ooh. to go pick uh, pick her up or pick uh, them up. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, yeah. So yeah, he has to go pick up his guests. And, yeah, they, uh, uh, they just landed. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, and Asmund, if you would just like, uh, uh, I'll just like... turn off the cam and just hang out. Uh, so guys, yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks a lot for having me on. I really had a great time. Congratulations, one year. One Classic year. Cast. One Thank year. you, Thank you man. Thank you so much, dude. Thank you, you for everything, dude. Mm -hmm. Glad to be a part of it. I'll see you guys later. Yeah. Thanks, see dude. You, dude. So yeah, um, yeah, Asmund, Asmund is going. We might do some. Uh, uh, IRL action this week with uh, with Asmin and the crew and and uh, some of the people visiting. Um, I just noticed under Asmin's mm -hmm. portrait it says virtual exchange. Is That's that... his YouTube channel. Is yeah. it really? Yeah, yeah. and Nixium Nixiums is Silverlined Pro. Silverlined Pro. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not Silverlined. Where yeah. does that come from, Nixium? Well, here's the thing. Say like back in the day when YouTube was starting out, um, like I was one of those cool people, you know. Like I was one of those like dude like. It's all about silver lined productions. You know, you start every video Whoa. with silver lined productions, you know, in Windows Movie Maker and Comic Sans font. That was Whoa. that was me. But some guy, when I m tried to make the official silver lined productions YouTube channel, some guy took the name silver lined mm. productions. So I had to change it to silver lined production. <laughs> Very creative. <laughs> yeah, dude. Drop the L. Yeah. Um, those are the good these are good questions. This is a good question right here. Uh, this is from North. I really like this. How do you think Blizzard yeah. should handle raid bosses uh, at the launch of Classic? Should any or all of them be time gated or not? Uh, he's talking about MC Yanni and uh, and world bosses. Do um, you guys want to go first or? Uh, yeah, I'll, sure, I'll go. Like, okay. I I think that because Ani and uh, uh, Regnaros and all of Molten Core were there at launch, I think they should be available at launch. Now, as for like you know world bosses and Nefarian and stuff like that, obviously that should be time gated. But if it was there at launch, I think it should be there at launch. Yeah, I would I wouldn't mm -hmm. want to see a time gate there. I I completely agree with with Stay Safe. Um, I can see the reasoning why it might be beneficial to delay certain things, but at the end of the day, no changes is no changes. Um, it would be kind of cool to have like a, a three week or a month break where people could take their time and level if they wanted to, but yeah, it wasn't that way back in vanilla. So, well, I, I think the big thing here is, is the world bosses, right? Um, I, I think with world bosses, there's two ways to look at it. One is if they have world bosses in at launch with, uh, that's that, again, this is another problem with the four phases of content release guys. Uh, is that they're saying world bosses and dire mall on launch, which is something that I, I think we all disagree with. Uh, I don't. I, I think it becomes a bigger problem. The problems with the progressive release become worse later on. Uh, but I do think dire mall at launch is not good. I think that world bosses on launch is not good because one of the things that happens is essentially you have the world bosses spawned in the world. And they're just sitting there. And it's like whichever guild can rush to 60 and put a group together to kill the world bosses ends up getting everything for it, right? Uh, there, It kind of takes the competition. It's almost like it's not a free kill, right? Because part of the competition starts at level one as opposed to the boss spawns and everybody gets there and they're actually fighting for world bosses. Uh, this is a non-issue if they change the four stages of content release and add a few stages and uh, they put the world bosses in with a Dire Maul patch. But uh, that's that's my personal opinion on it. I... I I don't know if, if they're putting everything in at the start, that's an issue that comes up. Uh, should they time get it like for, you know, a month after launch or something like that? I, I, I don't know. I think that, uh, yeah, I, I think that it's not good. I, I think I, that it would just be fixed if they did it the right way. I agree. I think they should make the best effort they can make to keep things as they were in vanilla. Wow. Not, not how we maybe realize things, how, not how we realize things should have been in hindsight or how we wish they would have been in hindsight, but actually how it was in vanilla. Wow. I think there should be a very good faith effort made to keep that intact. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Um, Nick, do you have anything to add to that? Well, not really. I mean, as I said earlier in the uh, in the podcast, uh, when it came to Classic WoW, I didn't really get to experience uh, the true end game back in the day. So, mm -hmm. I mean, my thing with Classic, the in my perfect world, I would like to see a completely recreated patch cycle. I, right. I would legitimately like to be like, dude, like guys, Warsong Gulch next week. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, like, I, 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 I want to be able to like have that experience um but we talked about this when you were in london the whole like four patches now like you know syncing up with the modern wow expansion and stuff mm -hmm. so 
it's not it's not really a subject I can comment too much on. Um, this is more like your guys' question because you guys mm -hmm. experienced the end game and all that more than I did. So you have a lot more knowledge on that question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's good. I think that's fine. Uh, let's take a question from Twitch chat uh, here. We'll move away from Twitter before we before we wrap it up here, uh, and, and move chat. on to uh, move on to the rest okay. of the stream. And again, guys, after after the stream, uh, I'm gonna be doing a I'm gonna do a Twitch bounty for like an hour, and we'll have a uh, we'll have Yithisins will, will join and, and hang out with us on stream for a little bit while we while we do whatever. I think I think that'll be fun. So. Uh, this is a good question from Tribe. You've stated that you don't like the idea of PvP in at launch, but you're also against having the system launching with BWL. Yes. Uh, right now, currently, the, the, the current proposal is that the PvP system launches with BWL patch. Uh, when do you feel is the ideal time to launch PvP, especially when you consider that Mark, Kern, and John Stat said that they intended to ship vanilla with PvP when you had them on Classic Cast? Uh, so I think like just because they have the intentions to ship with PvP doesn't necessarily mean that uh, what was eventually the PvP, what came to be the honor system and, and what PvP was, was refined and, and uh, I mean, you could argue that it was never really refined in vanilla, right? But it, it wasn't out the way that it was, uh, it, it didn't, it, sorry, yeah. excuse me. You know what I'm trying to say, right? It I mean, wasn't what it was going to be if they had come if they had brought it out on launch, you, right? I think that's a really poor argument. Uh, uh, I guess I, I don't know who made the comment in chat. So I, think, I think it's a poor argument because you could apply it to so many things. Would you want like they they rebalance classes, they change spells, they re-itemized weapons, they added items to loot tables? Like how far can you extend that? You could extend the argument to so many different things. Um, uh, I, I don't know. Like, I, I think as far as content release timeline, it should be kept as as in accordance with uh, Vanilla WoW as as it can be. Mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, I think that basically, if you have, and, and let me explain why I think the way that I do. I think whenever you have the PvP system in at launch with all the honor gear and everything, with the private server meta and the retail vanilla and the WoW Classic meta being three different things. In private server, the gearing was a lot more linear, whereas in retail vanilla, like PvP gear was put in as an alternate way of playing your character and gearing up and playing the game. Uh, whereas on private servers, whenever the honor system is put in from the very beginning, people rush to 60, they, they try and rank as fast as they can, they go for rank 14 gear, they get the rank 14 weapons as soon as they can, and the gear progression... PvP is like put into gear progression. PvP gear is put into like the gear as part of the progression to be more linear, as opposed to uh, having different ways to do it, right? Um, like, oh, I want to PvP and I want to play PvP and I want to gear up my character like that, or I want to do this and that. And you can do both. People could still do both in retail vanilla. A lot of people did, um, but <clears throat> excuse me. But you're moving away from options as opposed to um, kind of having it more linear. I think. Uh, I think you know, kind of to hit on the question. I think the ideal time to release it would be a few months before Blackwing Lair, maybe, possibly, if they were to do a... Uh, I've talked about different ways to do the the phases. If they did six phases or seven phases, I think if they if they wanted to put the PvP system in with Dire Maul, right? If, the, if they were to split this up, right? I, I'm really big... We've been talking about this nonstop, but I'm really, really big on them increasing the amount of phases for the content release. And putting PvP in maybe with Dire Maul or putting it in as its own thing right after Dire Maul before BWL patch uh, so that people can start ranking up and getting honor gear in time for BWL. Uh, I, I think that would be really good. I think I think that would be a good way of doing it. And, and by the way, phased content release isn't something that's completely foreign. This is something that even private servers have done uh, is doing phased content release. But they might do like eight or nine phases as opposed to uh, as opposed to uh, four. Right. Or, or six or seven or, or whatever it eventually will end up being. Hopefully it'll be more than four. Um, yeah. 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 I got, yeah. I, I saw a question from earlier. Mm -hmm. um, what are the plans for the next year of Classic Cast? Mm, that's good. Oh, um, dude. Nixium, do you want to answer this? Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe get Nixium on when you say you're gonna get him on. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. Permanent member, dude. Permanent uh, member, dude. Permanent member, dude. These guys, like, they'll be like, dude, Nixium, you want to be on Classy Cast? I'm like, yeah. And then let's do it. And then like something happens and we're not able to do it. So, uh, yeah. dude, waiting for Classic Cast. Waiting for Classic yeah. Cast. That's good. I, I think yeah. that uh, we initially like a lot of people have asked us like oh like what's going to happen whenever classic comes out right this this podcast isn't something that's necessarily 
uh, we're planning on ending it when our classic comes out. It's not like a like prelude to classic or whatever. It's like a um, it, it's something that we want to do. We want to give out more information. And once classic is actually out, I what what what. I want to do. I don't say some tips. What you guys think? I think it'd be good for us to go through and uh, to actually give out information based on these patches that are coming out. Okay, guys, oh, get yeah. ready for this patch. This is what's happening. I mean, there's going to be so much content yeah, absolutely. that we're going to be able to put out. I, I think the classic cast is going to get better. Uh, you know, as we get an alpha, a beta, the full release. Like, let's say Blackwing Lair comes out in three weeks. Okay, let's have a deep dive into Blackwing Lair. We can talk about strand. We can talk about loot. We can talk about raid composition. We can like whatever, dude. Like, and like, yeah, we could have those conversations now, but they're just not not as relevant uh, as they will be if we do them uh, in accordance with like stuff that's actually happening. So mm -hmm. I, th I think it's going to get way better. Dude, not, yeah. that it, not that it's bad now. It's great. Yeah, Dude, well, we're going to even repeat some sucks, episodes. Dude. Dude, you know what Classic <laughs> Cast needs to do? What was I don't that? know if anybody remembers this, but Mr. Stay Safe and Mr. Tips Out held these like cool dueling tournaments when the uh, the Classic WoW demo came out at BlizzCon. Right. Classy cast needs to do more competitions, more giveaways, more things to like engage the community. And classy cast needs to be right at the forefront of all that. Like yeah, we need more so. dueling turn. We need a classy cast sponsored vanilla WoW transmog competition. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. right. No, there there is cool. some stuff. We might Sign we might be up. doing yeah, we might be doing some more giveaways and stuff soon. Uh whenever like again, I'm gonna post this on my YouTube channel later and uh you know, we might we might do a giveaway here for, for the next class of cast or um something like that. I might I might have a giveaway set up by the time uh by the time I post this on YouTube and, and it'll last for a few weeks before we do that. So I don't know, Man. we might we might do some fun stuff. We might do some fun stuff. Um <clears throat> is there anything else you guys wanna you guys wanna touch on? Dude, one year uh, over, over a year actually of classic cast. Yeah, how crazy yeah. is that? I, I was. I would have never thought the show would have grown this much. No. Oh. I was going to tell the story right at the beginning of the stream, but I never got the opportunity to. Oh, where, go ahead, uh, go ahead. We, we were talking about the history of classic cast, and uh, I kind of remember, but I, I do remember some bits when these guys uh, originally messaged me, and they were like dude like hey nixian we got this thing it's called classy cast like you want to be the first guest on it uh, and I, I i looked at like their channels and everything and i was like yeah like let's do it man because i saw there were a bunch of like classic bros and listen the classic community like like the classic community is just so cool and is composed of so many cool people whether they be content creators or just viewers fans mm -hmm. like whatever it's just so cool. Like hanging out with you guys on Nost back in the day was was incredible. I mean, it was it was incredible hanging out with you guys and talking to you guys here on Twitch, and not not just you know not just you know S fan to stay safe and then I'm talking about you guys, you guys watching, has just been incredible. Like geeking out over classic, you know, nostalgiaing, sharing stories, you know, making videos about classic for me has just been an absolute pleasure. And so like. It, it was just such a cool thing when we sat down to do the 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 episode of Classy Cast, the first one that I was in. And ever since like I first did Classy Cast with you guys, I've sort of like my horizon got expanded and I met so many other people that were interested in classic wow and I made like so many friends and I got more involved in just the classic community in general. And it was just really cool. You know, it was just it's just really cool. So it's just uh yeah. It's been a wild ride with Classic Thank you, man. Cast, but I've I've never I've never once regretted being on the show or you know. Just, <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Yeah, like, Step one. one. Yeah. It's, Don't it's regret only, coming on the show with us. It, it, no, no, I know I never regret it. You guys are awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just been a, a wild ride, and I uh, I appreciate that you guys you know invited me on all those all that time ago. Yeah, so, for sure, man. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no, yeah. we appreciate you coming on. Like, Nixium was our first guest, if you guys remember. And, like, that was, like, when I felt like we were, like, a legitimate podcast at that point. Like, yeah. you gave us a lot of, like, legit legitimacy and stuff like that. And we really appreciate you coming yeah, on. Yeah, and Chinglish, too, actually. Well, Nixium and Chinglish, both. Yeah. Well, the thing well, mm -hmm. the thing is, as well, that I uh, very much enjoyed is um, I, I, I've enjoyed the fact that like i say some things on the internet sometimes that people don't agree with when it comes to classic wow i have my opinions everyone's got their opinions 
But despite that, you know, it's just like it's just a united community, and it's just it's just really cool. Like, it's, mm -hmm. That's really all I want to say. That's all. Yeah. I thank say. you, man. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. but I still stand by what I say. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hashtag no changes, and that's no not change. That's right, brother. Soon. That's right. That's, that's right, not brother. Changing. No one bit. That's right. Yeah. So, guys, mm -hmm. again, thank you so much for joining us here for Classic Cast episode twenty-two, our one-year anniversary episode. Asmongold, he he had to leave. Uh, please mm. follow him. Nixium, please mm. follow him. Stay Safe TV, please follow him. Tips out, uh, please follow him as well. We've got uh, we got kind of like our, our main crew here on the bottom. Uh, go follow him on Twitter. Follow him on Twitch. YouTube channels as well. Mine is down here below. S Fan TV on every platform. Uh, I'm not ending the stream. I'm uh, I'm gonna do a Twitch bounty after this. And uh, like I said, we'll we'll have Yethisins on uh, at some point too. We can talk to Yethisins and just have a good time. And uh, yeah, just like we have been actually, we have a good time for about a couple hours now. So we'll yeah, we'll keep dude. doing that. When's the next mm -hmm. classic cast? Uh, Blizzard soon. <laughs> no, I mean, we're, we, we went like five weeks or something without one, right? That was yeah. really bad. We, I, no. I, I would like, I would like to go over two or three tomorrow. weeks. It, it's a lot of it. A lot of it depends. Yeah, not tomorrow, but a lot of it depends <laughs> on, on how, uh, how, how much classic news we get. So ho hopefully okay. in the next two or three weeks. So, okay. and then, uh, and then I, ideally in the future we'll do, uh, we'll do every week. Maybe by the time classic comes out or once we get close. So again, thank you guys so much. And We'll see you guys next time. Take care, guys. Peace. See ya. <coughs>